Hello again everyone and welcome back again for another video. Uh, our uh, PC build is in a hiatus right now because it's up at the body shop getting painted. So I did want to put a little bit more content out in the meantime. So I thought today, you know what, let's play with those little uh, nook box S's. S's. Uh, so that's what we're going to play with today is the little nook box made by uh, GMK. Uh, I got one of those and um, it tells you that you can upgrade it to Windows 11, but there's kind of a process involved in that, and that's what I want to do today is kind of guide you through that process. Um, now, they do have instructions on their website on how to do this, and that's uh, basically what we're going to do today is we're going to follow the instructions that they give you, the uh, end user, to uh, use to upgrade their machine. But uh, I'm going to do it for you, and I'm going to do it on camera so you can kind of see the process happening yourself. Because it, I was looking through it, and it is a little complex for uh, the average uh, user, I think, in my honest opinion. Um, this isn't a type of upgrade that I would just tell anybody to just do so that's why I thought you know I better make a video about this because this might get a little bit confusing for people so let's uh, do that and we'll start out uh, no commercial breaks here no uh, sponsor shit we're gonna start out here at GMK's website uh, in their blogs where they show you how and give you the instructions now um, if you've been looking up here, you'll actually see this link, and if you look for Google, you'll actually find that. Just look for uh, Windows 11 on the GMK uh, NUC box. And uh, <coughs> anyways, so down here, it will. if you scroll down a little bit, it'll give you a link to instructions on how to do this. Now, the one I have, of course, does have the J4125 processor. Uh, one of the problems with the J4125s in these little mini PCs is actually not that Windows 11 won't install. You could install Windows 11 with a Rufus hack, sure, no problem. Um, the problem with them is actually the sound, and this this kind of affects a lot of these mini PCs. Uh, the B links, I've seen them have problems with that too. With the sound, it's called, it's called the SST. It's an Intel driver. Um, I pretty sure that's what this BIOS support will also correct in addition to enabling the TPM uh, 2.0 requirements that we need uh, to get this uh, to install correctly in Windows 11. And sorry, I'm going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the link to the instructions. And if you're, if you're wondering what you do here, if you've never done this, you can either, you know, put your cursor over it and double click it right here and it should highlight it. Or you could just take it and highlight it here. And once you do that, you can't right click. I'm going to right click and it's doing nothing. Just on your keyboard, push control C at the same time for copy, control C, and then go ahead and open up a brand new tab. Uh, click there and then uh, you can either right click and uh, click paste or uh, control V and paste. But we'll go paste and there's the URL that we just copy and pasted into a new tab. And we can go ahead and hit that. And you can see that it actually opens up a uh, little PDF document. Well, it's, not, it's just a document. I'm sorry, not a PDF. That gives you instructions on how to upgrade the BIOS on this little nut box. Now, the main thing that you want to notice here is right here uh, on number five, where it says there are two versions of the BIOS file of the Nuckbox S. Uh, so that's the first thing that you want to take note of is, well, which version do you have? You can see right here in number one, this BIOS is applicable for machines that don't have a serial number on them. And this BIOS here is applicable for machines that do have the serial number. So there's two different types of BIOSes that you can actually download for that. Now, let me pause here and we'll go down here and take a look at that NUC box. And we'll figure out what they're talking about and I'll show you guys that stuff. So let me cut this scene here and let's have a look. 
All right, so here's our little guy right here. Uh, well, all we're going to do is we're just going to look on the bottom here, and we're going to determine if this is the model with or without a serial number, just like they said in the instructions. And let me go ahead and flip on a uh, overhead light here and get the magnifier uh, down here so we can have a little bit better look at this. Um, as you can see down at the bottom here, let me get my pointer over here. Where am I at? All right. You can see right at the bottom here it says S slash N, and then of course it gives the serial number. So this actually is a model with the serial number. So what we're going to need is the second link that they give us in the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the screen, and we're going to download that second link there. And uh, then we'll continue on with the instructions, and we'll continue on with this upgrade. So see you here in just a sec. Okay, so now that we've determined that it's the second one that we need, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our cursor here, and we're just going to highlight this second link here uh, to the correct BIOS file that we need. We're going to right-click on it. We're going to click Copy, and again, we're going to go up here to our browser, open up a new tab, and go ahead and paste that in there, and hit Enter. And that will open up in Google Drive, and there is the BIOS that we need. Now, to download this file, we can actually, if we click here, we can look at the contents of the zip file. Uh, let's back up here. But to download this file, we actually go up here in the corner to the download button right here and just click that and just give it a minute or so, and uh, it will download to your computer. Uh, let's do this in real time, do this download, and you can see this happening. Uh, come on. Shouldn't take too long here. We'll just do this one. There's a couple other ones we need to download, but uh, I just wanted to show you this one uh, in real time and in action. There we go. And it just transferred there. Now, if we go show all and show in folder, you can see it went to my desktop. And it's where it's named some kind of weird uh, Japanese name. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually gonna, just going to rename this. And you can and do this if you, you don't have to, if you don't want to. But I'm just going to rename this... Uh, with serial and that's our with serial bios right there or else you know if you want you could just call it bios uh if you know whatever you want to get rid of those uh goofy characters if they're confusing for you but it's not really that important we're going to be playing with that later let's go back to our instructions here let's close that up and as you can see next it says uh how to back up re-inject the key and you're looking at this and going well what is this so this is another one that we're going to need to take our cursor here if we can get it to go come on here we go and uh if i can highlight it it's kind of hard to do come on cursor there <laughs> stupid thing all right copy again we'll just open it here in this one paste and go and you can see it's another zip file that we need to download it's called backup key tool zip so we're going to go ahead and download that too i'll spare you the pain of watching that but we're going to go ahead and download that and that as well is named some kind of goofy name so progressing right along to step four um well before we do that i'm sorry i don't want to get ahead of myself here uh, look at the note over here. It says you need to back up the key before upgrading the BIOS and then re-inject it. And then on the next page, it, continuing on, it says the key. So it says, and then re-inject the key, people here, read this correctly, after the BIOS upgrade is completed and restarted. That's interesting. Um, I don't often see that uh, when it comes to upgrading a BIOS. So... <clears throat> it's it's kind of weird that they give you this extra thing an extra step that you need to do and that's what kind of makes this a little complicated uh compared to other bios files that you could just download and run in windows and then uh, reboot and you're done so anyways so then it carries on to this step right here in four how to upgrade bios which will uh again we'll, we'll select this if we can copy that 
and we'll open that in a new tab paste it and let's see what we get here uh, here we get another uh, document that gives us instructions on how to do that now <laughs> oh my god look at this people they give you all this and this uh, this is just so confusing for people oh my god this is terrible <laughs> No, it is, and I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. Uh, this, this isn't as bad as it looks. Um, and I actually kind of like that they do kind of give you this little visual going on here. Um, the main thing here, the main takeaway I want you to get out of this video, as, if you're following along with me, is I'm actually following along something else. So you can go ahead and look for this stuff yourself and download this stuff yourself and research this yourself and do this yourself. Um, without me having to hold your hand here. And, uh, you know, if I screw it up along the way, I guess we'll live and learn and figure out what we did wrong together before it happens to you guys or in case it happens to you guys. But hopefully it'll all go smooth, and I think it will. So, yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> so we got our files downloaded that we needed. And right here it says, let's see, download the BIOS file. Okay, we did that. Uh, save the key file. Okay, it says after downloading the file, the desktop saves the BIOS file and the save key file separately. First run the convert OA3 file in the key file as shown. Okay, below. Uh, after saving the key, open the BIOS file and run the FBAT file as an administrator as shown below. After successful operation as shown below. Okay, after running the FBAT file, so restart the blah, 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 blah. You get all that? No, me either. So I guess uh, the only way we're really going to get that is uh, I guess I'm going to have to take this little nut box here and uh, plug it into the second port on the KVM. And let's just uh, do exactly all this crap they're talking about here and uh, see how it turns out. Huh. So let's go do that, guys. Okay, switching back over to the uh, GMK uh, little mini nook here. Um, as you can see, I have the backup key files extracted on the desktop here. Here's the zip file for it. Here is the uh, backup key thing. Uh, let me go ahead and take this and open this up. And let's look at the uh, readme instruction. Let me, let me delete this. I actually did this earlier. Um, let me read the README instructions to you so we can follow along here. Uh, it says, step one, run the convert OA3 tool. Before refreshing the BIOS, it will generate the OA3 bin file on the current folder. Uh, refresh the BIOS, run the flash tool x64v3exe. We'll write the key back to the BIOS ROM. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let me see here. Close that up. And let's go ahead and run that tool, convert OA3. So, and it says, do we want to make changes? Yes, we do. And let's do that. Press any key. Wait for one, two seconds. Press any key. Okay, there, done. And as you can see, it made the OA3 bin file. Now, let's go ahead and just keep that stuff right there. We're going to just going to back up this OA3 bin file. And I went ahead and did that, and I put that on the... Uh, thumb drive there because I'm actually not too sure about these instructions they're kind of unclear do we run this tool after we uh, have backed it up and then flash the BIOS or do we flash the BIOS first and then run this backup let's let's push this and see what happens and see what it does just so you know no, nobody's confused here let's see what it's doing Flash key, whatever. Let's see. Update utility. Uh, BS error. Uh, OA key is available, and OA key is not the same as bin file in the system. Inject key operation completed successfully. Press any key to continue. Hmm. So, what does that mean? I don't know. Did we just deactivate Windows? Um, let's find out. Let's go ahead and do a quick reboot here. And, and see if we did anything before we've done any BIOS flashing here. Now, we know we have the backup file there on the computer. Let's see if we screwed anything up. And, and I'm doing this as an experiment, and I'm doing it as we're going along, because it's the first time I've done it, too. So 
let's see what happens here. Uh, let me let me pause this here so we don't bore you with uh, watching the reboot happen. But let me pause and we'll come back when we see what happens. All right, after a quick reboot, we can see no harm, no foul. I'm in the activation. As we can see, it's still showing that Windows is activated. So if you were a little confused with those instructions and you did happen to click on that, like I just showed you, uh, it will not uh, ruin anything. You are still activated. You're still safe. So now we can go ahead and uh, let me just switch to second here this uh, let's go back to the instructions here and take a look um, okay it says then uh, after saving the key open the BIOS file and run the f.bat file as an administrator as shown and there you can see the little instructions here so let's go ahead and switch back to the uh, other PC and uh, we got the little thing plugged in let me switch my KVM one second here guys okay and open up. Do I got my little thing plugged in? One second. Uh, there it is. Okay, with serial was the BIOS file. So let's go ahead and copy that. Let's close all this crap up onto the uh, desktop here. So this is our BIOS file with the serial that we needed. And uh, let's go ahead and right click on this, extract all. Boom, there it is. Let's go ahead and open up this folder. And where is it? F.bat, here it is. Now, to run this as an administrator, all you're going to do, guys, is you're just going to right click on it. And there you should see the uh, prompt there, run as administrator. And let's go ahead and run that as administrator. Click yes to allow uh, BIOS flash begin. Press any key to continue. Let's go ahead and press the any key. And let's watch it do its thing here. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Hopefully we don't uh, brick this. <laughs> so uh, there it is, 100%. It's actually doing this fairly quick, I, I, I suppose. Um, yeah, let me, let me sit here and relax. Uh, maybe puff on the e-cig a little bit here while it's doing this, and, uh, I'll watch this with you guys. Actually, it might take a while. I'm not going to bore you guys. Let's, let's make this video a little shorter than what it is. I'm going to go ahead and pause until this is done, and we'll see what happens. One second here. Okay, it says BIOS flash finish. Press any key. Let me go ahead and switch the KVM over. Uh, make sure we're up there on that. And let's press any key. All right. So we should now have an updated BIOS. We should. Um, again, I don't know if we need to run that other program that we ran um, over here where we backed it up after we've rebooted it said to refresh the bios so i'm assuming we're going to need to reboot so i'm going to go ahead and reboot this computer and let's see what happens here again i'll uh pause this till the reboot's done Oops, sorry, microphone is muted. Anyways, uh, now that the reboot is done, um, if we look here at the rest of the instructions, it says if you need to verify whether BIOS is updated, there are two ways after booting, press delete, admin or the main BIOS page, blah, 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 or enter the Windows 10 system page, enter MS info in search box, open the system information page, and check. So that we go ahead and did that with the Windows 10. Let me go ahead and switch here to the other monitor. Um, and under System Info, let me switch the keyboard. Under System Info, as you can see, our BIOS date is 7-7 of 2021. So now we know that we do have the latest BIOS and we should be able to go into the BIOS now by pressing the Delete key at startup and we should have the latest updated bios and the tpm option so let's 
go ahead and do that here. Let me, actually I need to take my keyboard and we'll switch it. It's nice having the Corsair keyboards because I could actually change the polling rate. Uh, sometimes that's kind of necessary depending on the BIOS. But anyways, I, I changed my polling rate there. <clears throat> Let me uh, go ahead and close this up. And let's see if we can get into the BIOS here. Let me power it down, restart, and of course you gotta spam the delete key. One second. We'll spam it away. Ah, there we go. Here's our BIOS. All right. <sighs> And looking down at the build date and time on that, you can see it says 7721 there too. Let's find that TPM setting, people. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Advanced Trusted Computing, TPM Device Found. Look at that. Security Advice Enabled, blah, blah, blah. Here's the version. Everything is there. Perfect. Let me hit Escape. Uh, NVMe configuration, no NVMe device found. So obviously this supports NVMe. Um, these typically come with uh, SATA drives, 128, 256, 512, uh, depending on which model you get. So now that we know our BIOS is upgraded and theoretically this should take Windows 11, um, let's go back in and boot up and uh, inject that uh, key into it like it tells us to so let's go ahead and do that here a second here uh, I'll just discard changes and exit and we'll just go ahead and boot See, this is kind of slow on the boot that's a kind of another another good reason to put an nvm in here and we're, we're actually going to do that but uh first things first let's get this bios crap out of the way here uh we should be in the clear now for windows 11 and the best way to test to see if the uh the key thing works is uh do a fresh install of windows 11 and that's actually what i'm going to do here so let me go up to the backup tool here um where I, oh whatever bin is and let's go ahead and run this like we're supposed to let that make the changes like it says in the instructions all right injection completed press enter we should be done and that should be all there is to it now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to power this down and uh let's go ahead and get this uh gmk uh mini here torn apart and uh, let's stick an NVMe drive in it and do a fresh copy of Windows 11. And let's see how that turns out. Let me uh, stop the scene here and uh, we'll go to that. Okay, so keep in mind now that what I'm doing next is not necessary at all. This is just something I'm doing to improve performance on it for myself. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the SATA drive out of here and I'm going to replace it with a 2242 uh, Sabre Rocket NVMe drive. Um, I'm just going to show you this real quick. Uh, I'm not I, I'm not really going to go through the teardown process because this video really isn't about doing a teardown on this. Uh, watch ETA Prime's video on these little neck boxes. He actually does a teardown and he'll kind of get into that too. But basically, I just took the screws off the back there. Where did I put the cover thing? Um, you got these little feet here, these little rubber feet. I just moved them off to the side, exposed the screw holes, unscrewed that, took this little thing off, which will expose your little SATA drive there. And I'm just going to take my screwdriver and unscrew this real fast from there. Lift that out of there. And we'll put this NVMe drive. As you can see, the slot in there takes an NVMe type. So we'll add our NVMe in there. And screw that back down. And 
and uh, I'll just cut the scene here because what I'm going to do next is install window but one thing I want you to take note of um, in order to install windows on this I'm actually using a little bit of a hub here um, as you can see there's only two USB ports on this little NUC thing here so this hub will actually add a couple more ports so all I'm doing is just plugging again can't talk plugging it into one of the uh, USB 3.0 ports there to expand it and then I'm plugging my uh, keyboard and mouse right there into those and then with the other port I am plugging in my Windows 11 uh, media uh, USB stick and installing Windows 11 that way so that's what I'm going to do um, let me go ahead and get this reassembled and we'll go back to that Okay, guys, so here I am in the uh, Windows setup screen. Now, you can see the one terabyte drive up on the screen, but this actually isn't that Sabrent rocket that I just showed you. It didn't work. Um, I put it in and booted up with it, and it did not get detected in the BIOS. So to save you the problems, uh, possible problems, um, when I tried an NVMe 2242, it did not work. Uh, maybe it's the brand, may, I mean, maybe it's not enabled on the chipset, who knows, um, I don't personally, but for me, when I tried a Sabrent Rocket 1 terabyte NVMe, it did not show up. Maybe it's the capacity, doubtful, because we're, as we're looking on the screen right now, we can see a 1 terabyte SATA that I did put in there and it is showing up just fine. Uh, that was just one thing that I wanted you to take note of as we're progressing along and doing this. So anyways, um, we're at our Windows setup screen. Uh, it's the normal process. Like I said, I use that uh, little USB hub there so I got the USB media in here plus the keyboard and mouse. Let's go ahead and start doing the install. And uh, as you can see, it's copying files over. It's doing our regular Windows install. Now, it didn't ask us for a key. That's because the key should be embedded in there if we did it properly. So it already knows that this should be, if I remember right, Windows 11 Professional Edition. Now, the difference is really between Professional Edition and Home Edition when it comes to Windows 11 is in Professional Edition, when you are doing your initial setup on the uh, out-of-box experience screen, it will allow you to skip having to sign into a Microsoft account and you can create a local account. That's actually the main reason that I prefer Windows 11 Professional whenever I do these uh, computers and what have you. But anyways, it's copying files. I'm not going to bore you with this. Let's uh, go ahead and I'll switch my KVM order oh, pfft, over. God, I cannot talk today. Um, over and I'm going to pause this and we'll come back after Windows is installed and then uh, we'll uh, do the basic check for activation and uh, check to make sure all the hardware is working and then this video is done. So let me pause here. Okay guys, uh, Windows is done installing now. Now I did uh, just to, so for your, <laughs> God I cannot talk today. Just as an FYI, um, I did have to connect to the internet to finish setting it up. Um, that was just to do some updates. And it soon, right before it actually went to the window screen, I actually unplugged the internet. Again, I am using a uh, USB hub, and my hub actually has a uh, network uh, connection thing, so I could just plug the network cable in instead of connecting to Wi-Fi. I would much rather connect directly uh, when I do this. But anyways... Uh, so as you can see windows 11 is installed on here and just real quickly just to take a look at a couple things uh first we're going to go into device manager uh, like i said i'm not connected to the internet i want to see if we have any devices uh, yep we've got a bunch of them there that have not been found so i'm guessing windows update will take care of that um the next thing we're going to check here is activation again we are not connected to the internet so we'll actually go under settings here and oops expand this a little bit so you can see that system about and let's see here uh product key and activation let's click it 
activation state active it is active windows 11 home and again it did let me have a uh local um account uh maybe that was a change microsoft made with the latest version here that they put out so as you can see i'll name the local account gmk uh you know just for testing purposes but what we do have here is a completely updated uh computer properly updated to windows 11 uh, let's go to task manager I suppose here more details and look at performance and we could take a look at the specs here uh, the J4125 CPU of course 8 gigs of memory and again uh, as you notice it is activated um, update are not updating but uh, upgrading went rather smooth here now to make this process a little bit easier for some of you guys that are watching um, all the steps that you see me go through there with the link and copying pasting and all that stuff I'm gonna help you out there a little bit um, and down at the bottom here uh, in the description of this video I'm gonna leave the links to everything that I copy and pasted to those Google Drive things that way if you want you could just go down to the description of this video and click those links to download the files a lot quicker than having to copy paste and open up all that crap but uh, that's gonna be it for this video guys hopefully you learned something out of it hopefully you got something out of it maybe I just confused you more who knows but for better or for worse we do have this little uh, GMK Nuckbox S upgraded to Windows 11 and it is uh, running pretty good so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, finish this off by doing the uh, updates disk cleanup blah 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 all that crap uh, we are otherwise done for the most part so that's gonna be it for this video um, Again, we got computer builds coming up, uh, my daughter's, and it's right up at the paint shop, so we'll get to that when we get to it. But uh, that was this video for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. I will talk to you all later. Uh, again, have a great day. Bye-bye.